Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Barry. This Sith Lord is a metalhead. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's fine on this Friday, July 16th. Okay, let's start off with something really cool. Alright, let's start off with something really cool. I just finished watching The Bad Batch. Alright, and I gotta say, episode 12, right now, that was that gotta be one of the best episodes of, of The Bad Batch. It was fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, it's showing more of the um, more of Omega's development with certain characters, where you know you keep getting those little hints, especially with her and the relationship she's starting to have with Hera as a friend. That I guess eventually we start having these live action shows, and if Hera comes back, live action. Well, I, you know, it's it's almost obvious we're gonna get Omega, whether it be in Ahsoka. Um, you know, any of the shows that are going to be coming, Mandalorian, it's, it's going to, she's going to come. She's coming. She, I, I just, I'm just interested to see who they're going to get to play a live action Omega, who's supposed to be a twin of Boba Fett. I mean, you know, you know, that's going to be pretty, uh, pretty cool. Um, but great episode. Great episode. Just, uh, you guys got no, I'm not going to do no review on it, no spoilers, just get on it. It's a great episode to watch. All right? Um, one thing I want to talk about now, considering we were just on the case of Hera and all the shows that are going to be on with uh, Mandalorian uh, and also with uh, Ahsoka, I already, you know, I feel, especially all the rumors going around, I already have this thing that the Rangers of the New Republic will be coming. Um, there's already been a lot of speculation about bringing back Gina Carano. Um, that show was pretty much with her in, in mind. And um, I think it's going to happen. So, you know, you, you figure you'll have, you know, you've got your book of Boba Fett. You have your Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic. And I feel, and from what I've been hearing is we already know that Thrawn is going to be a big character in here. And there's talks about them, uh, you know, decanonizing the sequel trilogy somehow or maybe making that into some type of what-if scenario or whatnot. But I got a feeling with these four shows, they will bring the Thrawn trilogy you know, I guess in, in a different version because it's not going to be the same, but we'll get a collaboration of all those shows and maybe each season we'll get little tidbits and maybe we'll get like this one big thing where all of them are going to come together, you know, similar to like one of those big crossovers and stuff. But um, I, uh, I believe that a lot of these shows are going to lead to that, especially with what's going on with, uh, you know, the Bad Batch, you know, and what we saw with Ahsoka and um, Mandalorian. Um, I think it's going to happen. I think we're going to get Thrawn. We're going to get the trilogy. We'll have all four shows bounce back and forth with uh, what's going on with Thrawn. And we'll get one big special or a series or something. Or, you know, they'll call it the Thrawn War. Whatever they're going to want to call it. I'm not sure. But I think that's going to be their way of decanonizing the sequel trilogy is creating something through that. And I think that's going to be the way to go. I really do. I really think that's going to be the, the way to go. Um, you know, it, it, so look, like I said, it's, it's not, I, I don't got no sources. It's just stuff that I'm seeing. I'm starting to piece things together. It's, it's a theory. It's, you know, I, I just, I just got that as a theory. And, um, you know, I can see that happening. I, I see that happening. I think it's going to happen. All right. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, if we get the Thorn Trilogy, you know, I think that would be one of the greatest things ever. Why not? You know? Um, but we'll, we'll see how everything turns out from there. All right. Uh, all right. Let's let's uh, go over to uh, to Loki. You know, I mean, if anybody's seen that last episode of Loki, uh, it was pretty good. I, I thought it was good. Uh, had a, you know, it was a good episode there with... Uh, you know, with the, when they introduced Kang. And I believe, I believe 
that um, they're talking about, they kept referencing the multiverse war. I believe it's going to lead into the Secret Wars. You know, uh, Kang will probably end up being uh, that version of the Beyonder because uh, there hasn't been no indication of the Beyonder. I mean, there's been talks about them wanting to do Secret Wars and stuff, but the way everything has been going now with the multiverse and all, and the way that they're doing the phases, um, this could probably be their way of a Secret War. Kang the Conqueror, you know, he'll be like pretty much the main guy. It'll probably set up a battle world. You know, you got all these multiverse heroes popping in and out and so on. And, you know, there goes your Secret Wars, you know. And that'll probably be their version of Secret Wars. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't mind. I mean, look, you know, we would be fools to think that we were going to get the original version of Secret Wars from 1984. Uh, because, you know, we just, I mean, if we would have had all the properties at once... I, I, there would probably been a good chance we were, you know, we, we had certain things that we, we would have just looked great on film and in sequence, and it would have been great for a lot of us who read those original comics back in the 80s. Uh, but, unfortunately, you know, they're going to have to do some little twisting and turning, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll be happy with, uh, you know, if they do a, a decent story out of it, you know, but I think it's going to be Kang will be the version of the Beyonder. It'll probably be the one pulling the strings for the Secret War and, uh, you know, with the multiverse. And it looks like it's going to be something pretty cool, all right? Uh, but it's only one of the bright spots they got right now. But to the negatives has been going on. Okay. Kevin Feige, what's been going on with you, man? You know, um, I don't know. I don't know. I You know, is it something that happens to a lot of the guys who are geeks or nerds? who loved all these properties, loved these stories to a T, that all of a sudden they would sell their souls just to appease somebody else within these multi-billion dollar companies. I mean, dude, you know, you started with Iron Man, you was on pace, you hit that bump with, with Captain Marvel, you know? Um, you know, that's when, when we started seeing a lot of that woke shit starting to get festered in, you know, you were sprinkling it here and there, but, you know, you were letting it slide, you know, then you did that shit in Endgame with that whole, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm worried, Black Widow was the epitome right now, I, I can't, uh, like I said in my review, look, I thought it was a good action movie, but as a Marvel movie, fucking terrible, then when I heard uh, rumors that they were supposed to have a scene with, uh, Tony Stark and Iron Man was supposed to pop out or something like that, but they didn't. They, they took him out like they did with Doctor Strange for uh, WandaVision, you know, because they don't want the men to, to, you know, take their shine. I mean, come on, man. You know, Kevin Feige, I mean, I, has, you know, I had so much respect for you and what you were doing as far as how you were building up Marvel and how you was bringing these stories to life. And all you're doing is just catering to the game, you know, and catering to your overlords, you know, so, you know what, if, if there's any way to take away your geek card, I would be taking that shit right away from you. you, you don't deserve it, you know, you're not a true, you're not a true nerd, you're not a true geek, you're not, you know, you're, you're just uh, another person who sold himself out, you know, just to make some money, and, you know, look, I'm not jealous of the fact that you're making all this money, hey, you know what, you know, hey, it's great, but you know what, but, but what you do and what your name is, you know, think about it, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, anybody else will pay you more than Disney, but, you know, you would take that talent that you have and that respect, you could have probably took it to any studio, man. Probably would have gave you whatever funding you, they know that you would have been a moneymaker and bring these stories to life the way they're supposed to be. Uh, you know, Kevin Smith has, has fell on that road too. I, you know, July, this next Friday is when that Masters of the Universe comes out. Yeah. All right, you know, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to see what happens. I'll give it a couple of episodes. Well, maybe maybe, uh, maybe it actually turned out to be okay. But Kevin Smith, man, is another one. You know, you wanted to go and kiss ass so bad just to get yourself in there. You already had a name. You didn't need all that, bro. You had the respect from your fans. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too happy about that. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Anywho, um, 
So yeah, so uh, let's just uh, get over to the Hall of the Week, all right? I stopped by over at my comic shop, The Spider's Web, over at 887 Yonkers Avenue, across from the Yonkers Wasteway in Yonkers, New York. If you go into the comic shop, you make sure you ask for Paul or Andrew. Let them know this Sith Lord sent you, all right? Okay, let's uh, see what we got this week, all right? I see that uh, basically I've been going into the shop and I've noticed that it's becoming more and more apparent that more and more independent comic books are making their way in there. And um, a lot of great little, little titles, a lot more stuff that just, you know, is more appeasing and I guess better storytelling. Um, you know, I picked up this, uh, this new one here. It's called uh, Never Never. All right. And it's from the people who, I guess, did heavy metal. All right. And uh, it's from Virus Comics. I mean, it's not bad. It's pretty, you know, pretty good stuff. Nice panels. Pretty good artwork. Okay. Um, you know, it's something uh, worth checking out. I figured something new. Uh, I'm going to give it a go. And I'm not really too sure what it's fully about. Um, I'm taking it on a whim. You know, sometimes you do that and it becomes one of the best things you ever, you know, you ever get to read. Also, I was very excited. They had this... Um, Midnight Western Theater number two. Uh, I got to read number one. I finally got a hold of, to read number one. Number one was fantastic. I was really impressed with the whole, um, you know, the vampires in the West, you know, the way it's supposed to be done, not, not, not some cheesy shit. Um, I don't know if you've seen the cover here. You got this young lady over here riding on a dead horse. Um, the way this, this, this dead horse came out in the first issue was fantastic. Um, but it's pretty good, you know. Um, artwork is pretty on uh, point, you know. It's not bad, you know. You see, you got the panels are pretty good, you know, pretty decent, decent story with the, you know, her and, and her vampire uh, partner, um, you know. It, it's it's pretty good. It's, I, 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 you know, give this a try. It's not bad, All right? They're up to number two. Uh, okay. Also, um, I noticed that they had an, an alien number one, so alien aftermath. Um, I spoke to Andrew and he told me it's a one shot. It's a one shot comic. It's basically what happened right after Aliens or the Mist of Aliens or somewhere around there. And, um, you know, it, it seems pretty interesting. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people still wanted to get the, that in between time. I mean, you had Aliens and you had um, Alien 3. You know, Alien 3, I wasn't really. Too much of it. Well, after Aliens, the other Alien movies, I, I didn't really care for too much. Um, I did, you know, I, I, as far as what, you know, how many people felt about Aliens vs. Predator and Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, I didn't mind those movies too much. I thought they were okay, you know. I mean, Alien, the first one, I think could have did a little more, but, it was, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. Requiem was, you know, it was pretty, pretty brutal, you know. Um, but, you know, hey, to each his own, right? There's always got to be something, some bad movie that somebody really got to like, and I really dig them. So, all right. Then um, I saw this, The Sinister War. Okay. Um, basically, it's all the, all the Sinisters <laughs> that are Spider-Man's enemies is coming after him. Now, I was kind of reluctant on picking it up. Uh, you know, you know Spider-Man, you know, the artwork doesn't look too bad, you know. It looks, it looks pretty good, you know. So I was talking to Andrew about it. He told me, he gave me a brief description about it. Uh, he says, I think it's like a 12-issue series. They're, they're all of them grouping together to kill Spider-Man. So um, it's just your basic Spider-Man story with uh, his enemies. Uh, you know, you know what? It might just be pretty good. You know, Marvel is sidetracking a lot on their bullshit, so we'll see. Okay, then we uh, go. We got my Star Wars picks right here. Uh, we got the War of the Bounty Hunters number two, okay? And people got to get up on this. You know, they're just doing so many little crossovers in between these Star Wars issues, but everything is supposed to be, uh, I guess, leading up to the book of Boba Fett. You know, Boba Fett's in a lot of these things. You should see him everywhere. Look, Dr. Aphra, number 12, all right? Another, you know, War of the Bounty Hunters series part of the crossover there. Um, yeah, you know, book of Boba Fett, it's going to be a big thing. They're going to try to push it. All right, last but not least, our Grave of Chimerian, Conan, number 23. You know, it's one thing, uh, you know, I'll give I'll give Marvel, you know, Conan is still on point with his violence, all right? Let's go, Conan. That's my man, okay? 
So that's that for now. Also, um, in the description, as I, as always, I'll be leaving everything up uh, in case if anybody wants to uh, purchase a shirt. Uh, you know, I have a, a TikTok video that pretty much shows all the shirts that I have. Uh, I'll leave that in the description as well so you can take a look. If you're interested, send me an email. We'll go from there. Uh, also, um, you know, I'm trying to get my subs up. So when we get to 100, 500,000 subs on this channel, you get a free shirt. Um, my other channel, uh, that Goat Metal Show, I was able to get my 100 sub. Nova, once again, thank you very much. She's got her shirt. She's happy. All right. And everything is smooth. All right. But um, just like I said, look, this is uh, one of them right here. Okay. All right. Here we go. Just saying. All right. Okay, guys. That's it for now. This is Barry. This Sith Lord is a metalhead. Let's keep it going. And um, let me know if you need anything uh, you, know, you want me to check out. And please send me some messages in case if you're interested in uh, purchasing any of your merch. All right? Take care of yourself. The force be with you.